five, 10 megabits per second. Um, so maybe it'll play better now because uh, I was downloading a Resident Evil Village on my brother's Xbox and it was going pretty fast. So maybe it's better, a little better now. But yeah, I was trying to trying to play it because I had heard that it was a pretty fun game, pretty weird game. And I was wondering, since it was one of the games that was advertised, well, first off, it's it's on iOS. You can buy it on iOS. Yeah, I saw that. That's that's why I was like, why is it showing on his Xbox account? And then I looked at Game Pass and I was like, oh, shit, it's on Game Pass. That's why. Right, but it's on Game Pass. Uh, so I was like, well, it's a, it's a game geared towards well that they can use the touch you know because it's it's an iphone game i wonder what that is like as an xbox game pass game on that that has touch capabilities and it's basically like a uh, street fighter or not street fighter streets of rage where it just gives you the the digital control so, so i was a little disappointed by that but i never even made it past the the start menu because it was just literally like uh uh, 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 well, that's not playable. <sighs> well, that sucks. Uh, I did download it on my Xbox, though. Yeah. I was like, well, I'll download it and see what it's like. Yeah, because I didn't know it was on Game Pass at all. I, mean, I saw you playing it or attempting to, and I was like, hmm, um, what? I was like, did I miss something? And Apple and Microsoft are letting you link shit on there now, or... And then when you said that, I was like, oh, he's streaming it from his iPad, gotcha, or iPhone or whatever. Right. But just to see what, it, what it'd be like. <laughs> Attempting to. Yeah. Um, John McAfee died, by the way. I thought that dude died a while ago. No, I'm was, not going to lie. He was in a Spanish prison. There is some... Some sort of uh, fuck. What's that conspiracy called? Uh, the the Berenstain Berenstain Bears thing. The uh, uh, I can't remember what that that conspiracy theory was called. But you know, basically the Mandela effect. That's what it is. The Mandela effect. Oh yes. Okay. Where people thought uh, uh, Mandela died. There's some people who thought that Mandela died during uh, his incarceration when he actually died years later yeah after being that, that's un- unincarcerated Mandela effect i could have swore that john mcafee died years ago well um and died yesterday or today or whatever it was. yeah i think it was last night or whatever uh, in the spanish yeah. prison which i did not know he was in a spanish prison but he was in a spanish prison dude his life is so fucking weird i well he i think he's i think he was in the spanish prison because he was accused of murdering his neighbor's wife I want to say something like that yeah yeah something like that anyway but he, like, he he left the United States to get away from it and then apparently no no, no I think he did it there oh shit that's was why it? he was in a Spanish prison oh I thought we I thought we like they helped us like prison in prison his ass that's insane no no I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he cause he went all wobbly bobbly brained <laughs> Bobbly, bobbly brain? Uh, at one point in his life okay. and uh wibbly wobbly brains yeah that's the technical term i didn't know that was a term uh, at all, but okay it is now uh and uh he moved down to to somewhere i, I want to say somewhere in brazil but uh, i guess spain or somewhere i actually don't know uh, i watched a documentary about him a long time ago uh but then found out that yeah he was like accused of killing his neighbor's wife or his wife or something like that and so that's why he's been in prison for like the last couple of years but I could have swore he died a couple of years ago in prison well if they just found it now they're not doing a great job you know holy moly what he (laughs) okay so uh, legal issues starts at the top a very long list of stuff uh, yeah. in 2012 uh, his property Orange Walk Town Be- uh, Belize was raided by gang suppression unit of the Belize Police Department okay <sighs> okay so um, 
there was he was arrested for unlicensed drug manufacturing and possession of unlicensed weapon. He was okay. released without charge. I mean, geez, that's just ridiculous. Then in January of 2014, uh, in Canada, claimed that he was a Belizean government raided uh, when he, when the Belizean government raided his property. It seized his assets. It was uh, that his house later burned down under suspicious circumstances. Okay. Mm-hmm. August of 2015, McAfee was arrested in uh, Henderson County, Tennessee, on one count of driving under the influence and one count of possession of firearm while intoxicated. Okay. July of 2019, McAfee and members of his entourage were arrested while his yacht was docked at Puerto Rico. Porto Plata, Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic, on suspicions of carrying high caliber weapons and ammunition. They were held for four days before being released. Jesus. On April on August eleventh, twenty twenty, McAfee fabricated a, a hoax in that he was arrested in Norway during the COVID nineteen pandemic after refusing to replace a lace thong uh, with more effective face mask. So he wore it as a face mask, apparently. Um, but it's the, uh, 2012 Belize, uh, Belize, I cannot say that word properly. Police started, uh, started a search for McAfee as a person of interest in the connection of the murder of a murder of American expatriate Gregory Vant Fowl. Okay. Uh, Fowl was found dead of a gunshot in November of 2012. Holy Christ. That's what that was. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't, I guess it wasn't his neighbor's wife. So why was he in a uh, Oh, here we go. US finance charges arrested in Spain in planned extradition. So he was supposed to be extradited from Spain and he done offed himself apparently. Okay. Oh, that it was suicide. I actually didn't read about how he died. I just literally saw that he died and just thought that he had been dead for a while. Yeah, on June 23rd, 2021, the Spanish National Court authorized the extradition of McAfee to the United States. Oh, so he literally got extradited today. He really didn't want to come back. He apparently did not want to come back. Was found dead in his Barcelona prison cell in Brains to Penitentiary Center. What the fuck kind of name is that? Hours after the Spanish National Court ordered the extradition to the United States on criminal charges filed in Tennessee by the Justice Department of Tax Division, his death was sparked internet conspiracy theories in a similar manner to um, Epstein didn't kill himself. That's all it says about there, but yeah, I mean, holy good lord, that man. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's got. It's one of those things, too, that uh, I've always wondered how, because he was like the programmer or whatever it is, I think, of, of the original McAfee. I mean, that's why it carried his name. Uh, yeah, I mean, he said, they said but he was like, the inventor of. Inventor of, yeah. So it's just really weird to, like, hear how weird this dude's life is after leaving McAfee. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, he left. Yeah. The, he left the company in '94. That was quite a while ago. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Anywho, uh, comes naturally. We are Joe. I'm Cody. Welcome to the show, everybody. Um, yeah. where we talk about John McAfee dying or other stuff because I don't really have much else to say about nah, that. That's about it's, it was it. really weirdly, uh, uh, what do they call it? Synchro synchronicity. I'm watching, a. am almost done actually watching this, uh, uh, documentary, I guess about, uh, Bitcoin or at least who the possibility of who the, the inventor of Bitcoin is, uh, the, uh, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah, the, that's the pseudonym the guy went by, and uh, McAfee showed up in the uh, uh, 
the documentary. Oh, shit. Not as a big player, but just showed up. And it was just like, oh, that's weird. That dude died yesterday. That's very synchroni- synchronicity. Um. Uh. Did you hear? Well, uh, speaking of of, uh, of Bitcoin, there's all these stories about you know I had Bitcoin win. My but there's this one that I saw, and I'm trying to look it up again, and they don't see it in here uh, because I read too many news articles apparently. Um, and I don't remember if I read it on Apple News or somewhere else. But uh, this dude at one point claimed that he was a multimillionaire due to Bitcoin mm-hmm. because he was given a hundred thousand bitcoins and this was like 10 okay. years ago or something way back in the day yeah yeah and he traded them off to people for food while during a summer when he didn't have a car because he kept yeah. promising people they'd be worth money someday and at the and time he's not wrong yeah and at the time they weren't nearly as they weren't i mean they were pennies at that time so like the hundred thousand was worth maybe a hundred and fifty bucks or something, and uh, uh-huh. he did the calculations. He said if I would have just got my car fixed with a little bit of what I had in Bitcoin, I could have had. And he said it was like ninety five million dollars today. Yeah, <laughs> no lie. How how much uh, Bitcoin has uh, has gone up? There were uh, and they they mentioned these in the in the the documentary as well. There's. Uh, I think it was a Gizmodo uh, writer had a hard drive full of Bitcoin that would be worth uh, $7.4 million right now, but he accidentally threw the hard drive away uh, when it wasn't worth really anything at all. Uh, And there's another, actually, they didn't mention this guy in the documentary. There's another guy that uh, was heavily invested. uh, Well, I shouldn't say heavily invested, but similar incidences when like, Bitcoin first started out. The guy mined a bunch of coins, uh, and then totally forgot what his password was for his wallet. And uh-huh. years down the road, now it's worth a couple of million dollars. And you only have like a handful of uh, times that you can try your password before it completely locks everything out. And I think he's only got like one or two attempts left in it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Imagine sitting on that type of cash, and you cannot access it all. I mean, that's in just... fact. Uh, they were going over. Interestingly enough, in the documentary, they're going over that the first set, the, the first bit of mining, uh, who people believed was the, uh, the Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor of Bitcoin, is sitting on one billion one billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, and has been sitting on it ever since it's in. Is in the invention of Bitcoin, and it has not moved at all. I mean, that's yep. just ridiculous at that point. I mean, that's just mind-boggling. And he's gonna wait till mm-hmm. like it's at the peakest of peak before everything crashes and be like cash in, and then it's gonna well, the crash. Is, thing. Is that, yeah, if he if he if he suddenly just decided to get out it would probably tank the Bitcoin market, not only because of a huge in, not only because of him, uh, a huge influx of money coming out of Bitcoin, but because of a huge amount of Bitcoin going into the system. Because it's a lot of Bitcoin that he owns, that he has. Uh, Because Bitcoin is really based off of uh, not only faith in the system, but the scarcity of the amount of Bitcoin. There's only ever going to be so much Bitcoin that can ever be minted. In fact, they already know the number. I just can't remember what it is. It's like 20-something million or a billion. I can't remember exactly. They mentioned it in the documentary. but So they know exactly how much can only exist at any given time. And they have an estimate in a couple of if mining keeps on track, it's in like another 50 to 100 years, somewhere like in that market uh, range, that the last Bitcoin will be mined and you can't mine anymore. So as people lose their their wallets and tokens and stuff, it means that Bitcoin's going to be more and more rare, which 
possibly means it's going to be worth more and more. But if he just suddenly dumped a shit ton of Bitcoin into the system, it'll tank the system. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very bizarre. Yeah, it is very bizarre. The documentary is absolutely uh, fascinating. It's a, a guy named Barely Sociable on, on YouTube who does a lot of different like uh, YouTube, con- not conspiracy, well, conspiracies and mysteries and stuff like that. Some very interesting stuff. Uh, some of them are short form, like 10 minutes long. These ones are more long form. They're like 30 minutes. They're 30 minutes long, broken up into three sections. So actually it's an hour and a half total really uh absolutely fascinating to to watch because he goes into like not only the history of bitcoin and who right now in in episode three he's going over who he thinks the actual inventor of bitcoin is makes some pretty compelling arguments as to who he is but also explains like what bitcoin is kind of how it works and everything along the lines i'll have to watch that because i don't understand it at all i yeah, I didn't really either. Like, I get the idea of it, but this kind of gives a bit more of a layman's terms of how it works. I, I, what I don't understand, and I don't know if you can explain it, I don't understand how Bitcoin mining is even a thing. So I, I, I can't give you a full explanation because I know it has to do uh, with at least one thing, and I think it's it's two different things. One, it's, uh, one thing that I'm sure of is that you are when you when you become a miner you're actually processing bitcoin transactions and that was one thing that they were really getting into in this in the third part of the video is that bitcoin transactions per miner are limited to uh one megabyte total block that's what the blockchain is it's it's uh, the ability to to process transactions and uh, you know, so basically I buy Bitcoin, that's a transaction. So it goes out to a miner, that miner processes that transaction or, or uh, uh, whatever it is to encrypt it and hash it and whatnot. And then I get ownership of that, that Bitcoin. That's a, that's a transaction. So the, the miner gets so much of a Bitcoin every transaction that he that he does each blockchain at this at this point in time is limited to one megabyte which is only seven transactions per second so a a miner can process seven transactions per second and that's one block chain that's one block okay uh, so that's one way that was one way to get bitcoin basically the more transactions that you make the more percentage of a Bitcoin that you can actually obtain. Uh, And another part of it was basically solving like some sort of, I I can't remember the way it was explained. It was something, I, I think it was something like solving like some sort of like equation or something like that. And it, it was a little bit more complex and I can't remember what it was. Gotcha. Yeah, it seems real yeah. bizarre and uh, doesn't make sense, and I don't think it's a real thing. So, well, it's not a real thing. That's the problem that I have with this, is that it's honestly not a real thing. I know my brother has. Uh, I know a lot of people have been wanting to invest in, in Bitcoin. I know some people that have invested in Bitcoin and Dogecoin. Yeah, uh, there's Ethereum. There's just all kinds of other t- types of uh, cryptocurrency out there. the The problem that I have with it is that you take the dollar the dollar is a very much a a similar thing the only reason why it's worth anything is because of scarcity and faith it's not backed by the gold standard anymore it hasn't been since the what 50s or 60s when it was taken off the gold standard which means that it there's nothing there to say that this dollar is physically worth this piece of gold or something it's literally just based on faith that's all cryptocurrency is right now too it's just based on faith and scarcity. But my other big thing is with it is that it's not a stock. It's not buying into a company and having ownership of hoping that company, having ownership of that company, partial ownership of that company, hoping that the company will do well. It's literally saying, Hey, I want to buy 
the I want to trade my dollar in for a pound, a, a British currency, and hope that that British currency goes up relative to the dollar so that I can then buy back the dollar into a currency that I want to use. Because as far as I'm aware, there's not a whole lot of places out there. That, like I can't go to Fry's and spend and spend Bitcoin. You know, yeah. there was for a little bit where you could go to Tesla and you can you could buy a, a Tesla with Bitcoin, but they stopped that. So it, it's way t to me, while yes, it's going up right now, it's way too vol volatile of a market to be anything to try and invest in because it's not an investment. This thing can literally tank on the tweet of Elon Musk, which it did. There was uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, people lost like upwards of like $30,000 because Elon Musk had a funny tweet about it you know same thing Did, so, didn't it go down when he was smoking weed with Joe Rogan on his podcast I, I think it actually did I don't uh, specifically remember but I, I think it did you know it, it, it's not a stock really it, it's a it's a very volatile currency it's and it's a currency only in the means of like if people want to give you something for it yeah it's very bizarre to me yeah. Like I get the fact that like a dollar bill that I have is only worth so much and then a dollar in the bank is technically not even a real dollar. It's just what the bank says that you technically have as this, you know, amount. But then like they're using that to trade yeah. in stocks and it's and so they don't even technically have that dollar. Yeah. yeah, you're right, because they're using that dollar to do other things that they can make money off of. And, and again, uh, hoping that there's no day where everyone in America goes, I need to withdraw all my money from this bank all at once. Yep. Because you know they probably couldn't handle that. Yeah. Or yeah. there might be laws. I don't know. There might be laws saying that they have to be able to, to back that. I don't know. There, I, would, I would hope there are. Yeah, I mean, it would just, that'd be a weird thing to be one day. But like, I can well, only imagine no. that Wells Fargo or, or Citibank or, or Chase would just, just shit themselves if everybody decided to pull their money out all at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And that was the thing, though, I remember, like, uh, a couple years back now when there was the big, like, you know, we're going to be fucking banks are going to fold and companies are going to, you know, fall apart and blah, blah, blah. And people were like, pull all your money out of the banks. And I was like, whoa, whoa, isn't that going to be the problem? Like, if you do that, isn't that the problem? Yeah, it like would if, be a problem. If you're building a wall and you say we can't use bricks, so you have to take all the bricks out of the wall, you don't have a wall anymore, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't know, that's weird to me. Yeah. Anyhow. So that's what else I've been doing. That's what I've been doing today. That's Besides cool. Besides watching my dogs. Are they, are they in the background yeah. uh, causing ruckus? One of them is laying on a carpet, um, probably wondering why I'm not laying on the couch with her. And the other one doesn't give a fuck about me. The other one's like, yeah, this guy. Because Adam's home. No, it's really weird. Uh, one of them is very much my dog. One of them is very much Adam's dog. Like, if we're both, like, a good example is we both got home because uh, we went to uh, ATL Wings to get uh, wings tonight, mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta Wings. By the way, I'm sorry if anybody listening to this likes Atlanta Wings. Terrible, terrible wings. Oh, Both of us list. were were two wings into into our respective wings. Uh, I got the the Cajun barbecue and the honey barbecue. Adam got teriyaki and something else, or, or uh, extreme habanero, something or other. We were each a couple wings into our wings, and, and we look at each other and we're like, "Do I have COVID?" Because I literally cannot taste anything. Oh, that's not anything good. in this wings, anything at all. You dip your. You, they also have a, a homemade ranch, and. Adam was like, just do, do, just take a, just dip your fork into the ranch and taste it. It tastes like nothing. And I was like, oh my God, it doesn't have flavor. How the fuck is this possible? I, I honestly could not explain it. It, 
has no flavor whatsoever. Like the wings are drenched in in sauce. No goddamn flavor whatsoever. Well, take that off the list for sure. Yeah. I guess yeah. next wing place I want to try is Long Wong's. There you go. Anyway, so we, we get home from there, and uh, Adam goes to, to take his shoes off and, and wash his hands in his bathroom. I go take my shoes off and wash my hands in my bathroom, and Ella follows him. Ziggy follows me, and it's just fucking hilarious that they just stick to each other. Bedtime rolls around, and literally they just, like, Ella goes with Adam, Ziggy goes with me. That's it. Yeah, they're very much our dogs. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. I, I tried to get that news. What? I tried to get play, a PlayStation today. That you tried to get a PlayStation today? Yeah, that didn't work out so well. I, I would think not. Uh, where'd you drive from? Uh, so it was uh, CNET said that. Uh, um, what well, didn't say they they got proof from email sent out to to people that Sony was going to have the, a bunch of them uh, as a restock on their website. So direct dot playstation dot com, uh, which okay. is their store for physical uh, things, not like games. Uh, games is still playstation dot com or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so one the before when they're doing the pre the pre orders and you had like. If you want a chance to buy one, you had to sign in with your PSN account, and you it was locked to that. Like the hardware was assigned to you, um, right? And you couldn't just go and resell it as soon as you got it because yeah. the person buying it couldn't use it because it's locked to your account. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, so they were uh, um, said to basically have a restock today, uh, and so I got on, made sure my I was signed in, and all that fun stuff, and. Time came, button showed up, clicked on it, didn't work. Clicked on it, didn't work. Clicked on it, got it in my cart. All of a sudden, it's like, hey, uh, you need to you know, verify your, your who you are. I was like, all right, here's my password again. It's like, hey, this is sold out. I was like, motherfucker. Two minutes. Motherfucker. Yep. I was like, well, all right, cool. I didn't want it anyways. Just kidding, I do. Give it to me. Right? I want it. And I want it now. I want to play the PlayStation games that I can no play anywhere else. Ratchet and Clank, pretty much. Ratchet and Clank, the new Spider-Man. Um, there's one other one I wanted to play that's only a PlayStation game. What was it? Horizon? Uh, no, I played the first Horizon. I mean, the new one. When the new one comes out, the I want to play that. The new one would be coming out. Yeah, I want to uh, play that. What else was sure. there? I don't know. I can't think of any... Uh, Last of Us Part Two. That was that a PS5 exclusive or was that? No, it was on both. You know, I I uh, I I thought so. Everyone was really stoked about the game, and I was like, I really liked the first game because I like that weird pacing and like not really uh, it's 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 more of a survival game than it is like an action game. You know what I mean? There was some action you seen like th- stuff in it, but it was more like try to be quiet, take this guy out or don't take anyone out. Like, you know, it's just try to survive. Yeah. So I was like, cool. That sounds awesome. Played it. It was amazing. Um, they released multiplayer. I was like, well, I'm not gonna play this. Uh, that's dumb. So I didn't ever play that. So they announced the second one. They showed the trailer off. I was like, Oh, it's cool. It's all about Ellie. And you know, obviously Joel is, uh, well, spoiler dead. Um, uh, she's older, blah, blah, blah. It looks gorgeous. Uh, then they showed gameplay trailer. Like, the gameplay trailer came out, and I was like, this looks like a different game. And it was. And that's what everyone said. Like, oh, this is not like the first one. And I was like, ooh, that's not good. And everyone's like, eh, it's all right. I was like, oh, I'm not going to buy it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, that's all I needed to hear. I was just too leery at first, after that first gameplay trailer, and I was like, this does not look like the same game. This is one of the reasons it probably took forever, and they do not like it whatsoever. I don't like. That's... Um, because I would have wanted to. I mean, it, had I been emotionally invested in the uh, the the playing the first game, I probably would have played the second one just to uh, finish off the the storyline. Yeah, I heard that it, it it did like also 
jump to other perspectives and stuff, which a lot of people didn't really care for. So you didn't just play as Ellie, you played as this other girl, part of this other faction at one yeah. point in time. And yeah. It had very much, what, uh, which one was it, the Halo 2, Halo 3, where you're not Master Chief for half the game, you're uh, the Arbiter for Arbiter. half the game. And yeah. like, like, come on, guys. I, I play these games to be Master Chief, not to be the Arbiter. I, I, granted, uh, the story made sense, but, well, I mean, the, I get what you're going with the story, but. I don't care enough. I, I want to be big, powerful space marine killing aliens. And that's why people hated uh, Halo 3 ODST, except for I actually I like that ODST. game. I loved ODST because it was never meant, it never said that it is a a Master Chief game. Yeah. It just, it was also, take, I thought the cool thing about it was, is you got to play that perspective during yes. the camp, like same campaign missions as Halo, just as the support yeah, people. I thought it was pretty cool. OBST. And then I thought it was cool that Nathan Fillion was in it, obviously. That was dope. Mm-hmm. And then later on, those guys became Spartans themselves, uh, the ones that survived. Uh, yeah. Spoiler. Um, uh, and did you ever play Reach, by the way? I played them all. Okay. Uh, the only ones I haven't played are the uh, the RTS ones. Yeah, those are dumb. Yeah. Halo Wars 1 and 2. Reach, yeah. was, Reach was pretty cool, uh, especially the ending. I like that it was a very sad cathartic i don't i can't think of the word for it i love uh, that right death you know but it gives the idea of like this is where the pillar of autumn was taking off from you gave you you were there to get uh uh, uh i almost said siri it's not siri it's uh cortana there Jesus you go Christ. the windows yeah. one off of off of reach but it also gave you kind of a little bit of a backstory to the spartans and what they really was were meant for and made for and then the idea of what the covenant uh uh just showed up basically no one no no one knows about it oddly enough i've had the hankering to go back and rewatch the uh all of those uh live action movies so good man they're so fucking good yeah so good i really wish we would just want to would one day get a live action Halo movie. We'll see. Well, we're, get, we're getting the TV show on Showtime. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, they're like they're making it right now. Yeah, I did totally forget about that. Whatever happened to the PlayStation one? Did that that just happen for like one season, right? And then that was it. It wasn't a Master Chief one. It was uh, the PlayStation something one? else. But it was PlayStation. Wasn't there? A, a, wow. I it, it was a. Place, I, I want to say it was a streaming. Was it only on PlayStation? I'm not too sure what you're talking about. So I'll wait for the you click no the plaques. Uh, God, I, 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 Showtime. No, was that it? I swear to God. There was a live action Halo that was only available on some weird streaming service. It was the one through uh, um, Halo Waypoint on Xbox. It was okay. It was no, Halo Nightfall. Reach. What? Nightfall. Nightfall. Was it Nightfall. Well, no, Nightfall was. Yeah. Wait, was it Nightfall? It might have been Nightfall. Attempts to adapt. There were there have been a few attempts at adapting Halo to live action, including the less than stellar Halo Nightfall. That's what I'm thinking of. Yes, Nightfall. Yeah, and Nightfall was. What? Yeah, wait. Why would I say PlayStation? I don't know. That's why I was it. confused. I was I like, I don't know yeah, I was. I, I sorry, I confused myself too. Like, it's a Microsoft property that's only available on the PlayStation Network. I don't know why. I thought real, I said that. That, real fucking strange. I apologize. Strange. I went like full on, just not knowing what I'm talking about there. Uh, I still don't know what it was. Only available streaming. I thought like on the uh, on the you know on the PlayStation on the Xbox. Or something like that, wasn't it? I thought that was the... Was that the one for... This is by Ridley Scott. The series will launch next week. This is a long time ago. The Verge had a chance to see the first episode early. Where is it streaming, though? Where was it available? Uh... uh um, 
this. Yeah, so Nightfall was the one uh, that was done uh, for the release of Master Chief Collection. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, had Michael Coulter in it, uh, who went on to be famous for being um, Luke Luke Cage. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, this here it's is... that. Go ahead. What? I was gonna say no, this... here it says that uh, uh, you have to have an Xbox in order to watch it. So it must have only been available streaming through Xbox. Uh, something Game Pass Live. I don't know. No, it was through Halo Waypoint, which was their their first through attempt to. Yeah, it was like a social media or a social network for Halo. But it was like I think I had. Yeah. You, what you, if it's still available? It might be. I don't know. Um, I know. But anyway, you, that was the question. Uh, it does say here though. I did see there's an update to uh, the TV show. Um, it is now going to be a Paramount Plus show. Okay, so that's what I initially started reading, and then I finally found Nightfall. That it, yeah, it went from Showtime to Paramount Plus. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, development hell for a long time. Okay, it looks like, what, two seasons? Nightfall lasted two seasons? Actually, I love how uh, IMDb says 2014 to blank. Uh. Like it's still going on. Like they never officially canceled it? Like they never officially canceled it, but... Or no, they only li- they only list one season. Sorry, I misread that. They only list one season, five episodes. Yeah, because that was when it, they introduced Michael Coulter's character of uh, Agent Jameson Locke, who then became the main character in Guardi- in Halo 5 Guardians. He became the main Spartan. In yeah, main Halo. Spartan. Yeah. Because well, Master well, Chief another was... one of the... Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. For a series... Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Halo Nightfall is available to watch through Halo Channel, uh, an application on the Xbox One, uh, Windows, uh, Windows Phone. <laughs> um, yeah. On March 16, 2015, the series became available to stream, download, and buy on physical disc. Ew. That's disgusting. Right? Why would you do that to yourselves? Um, Wait, yeah. So- can I buy this on Apple TV? It'd be so fucking weird. Ford Until Search Dawn damage. was the other one. Yeah, Ford Onto Dawn was the one that I've, I've been having a hankering to go back and watch. Yeah, that was the one that was like... Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Live action film and miniseries the- set in the Halo universe, although shot in a feature length film. Ford and Dundon was originally released as a web series consisting of five roughly 15-minute episodes, the first of which was released on October 5th, 2012. Those are the ones we used to watch over at You're in Sid's Place, right? Yeah, so uh, they were initially just those, like, whatever, you know, like you said, five snippets, and they followed the uh, the, the recruits, yeah. essentially, while in training, and then they were attacked by the Covenant. Of course, this they were in training but really before they they knew about the covenant uh but they were getting those like uh unauthorized clips of fights of of combat and they were wondering like what the hell that giant fucking armored dude was and then the the academy gets uh attacked by the covenant and that's when odst drops in but odst kind of loses the fight and then they send in master chief who saves the rest of the recruits uh just a badass fucking show that that little movie that i wish would have been a a jumping off point for the rest of the like live action series i did not know this but the first attempt to make uh halo film franchise the script was first written by alex garland yeah. Like, oh, wow. 
Oh, I did not realize that, or I don't remember it. I don't remember. Dude, Oof. like the initial, like they wanted, because remember it was Neil Baumkamp that also made those those uh, uh, other little short movies. Like he was attached to the movie for the longest time as well. Like the initial amount of people that they had to do these things was like fucking amazing, but they couldn't find a, if I recall right, they couldn't find a company that wanted to invest the money into it. Yeah. And then it's it it kept moving hands or moving directors and, and writers and stuff, and then some fairly big name people had been attached to it at one given time or another. Peter Jackson, Guillermo del Toro, Neil Blomkamp. Um, yeah. At one point, 20th Century Fox and Universal decided to partner to produce the film, uh, paying Microsoft five million to option the film and ten percent of grosses. Peter Jackson was slated to executive produce with Neil Blomkamp as director before Blomkamp signed on. Neil Guillermo del Toro was in, in go, negotiations to direct. D.B. Wise and Joss Olsen, D.B. Wise, of course, of Game of Thrones fame, uh, rewrote Garland's script during 2006. The crew stopped and resumed production on the film several times later that year. 20th Century Fox threatened to pull out of the project, leading Universal, leaving, leading Universal to issue an ultimatum to Jackson and uh whatever that name is uh either cut their long their large first dollar deals or the project was ended both refused and the project stalled Blancamp declared the project dead in 2007 but Jackson replied to uh replied that the film would still be made Blancamp and Jackson cal- collaborated on District 9 uh but the uh director told slash film that he was no longer considering working on Halo, a Halo film if the opportunity arose, saying that after working on the film for five months before the project's collapse, it would have been difficult to return. The rights to the film have since reverted back to Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Man, that is so... I mean, back then, though, the, the, the pitfalls of making a video game-based movie obviously were pretty heavy, but we're talking... I mean, that's 16 years ago. God, that that was a long time ago. Damn. So weird. But I, I remember watching. I remember hearing a lot of that stuff, and watching uh, uh, District Nine, and just being like, oh. "How? How? I, I I don't understand, and I still don't to the to to this day in age. How Neil Blomkamp can go off and make District Nine, Chappie." a lot of CG heavy stuff Elysium and it doesn't seem like he doesn't it doesn't seem like he he does it for a huge budget no so how does stuff like this not get made studio I, I yeah I can definitely see that that's the easiest that's I mean not the easiest it's definitely the most uh, accurate answer um, or let's play create difference it has learned for with Jupiter's Legacy. Yeah. Let's play... Oh, yeah. I mean, Jupiter's Legacy. Now we know pitfalls in that fucking show. Uh, let's play... How much did it cost to make District 9? What do you think, Joe? I have the answer, so I can't really guess because I how already clicked the button. How much did it cost to make District 9? Yeah. How much was the budget, recorded budget, for making District 9? It's more than I, I thought I think I remember it seeing it one time. Okay. I don't remember what it was, but it was low. I want to say, uh, uh, respectively low. Yeah, for a movie that caliber, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna go out on a limb, okay, and say it was somewhere between fifty to a hundred million. No, sir, you are way too high. Way too high. Yep. Okay, I was thinking it was lower than that, but it than it's that. still in the millions. No, it is in the no, millions. It wouldn't. Have- it's, it's in, the in the millions. Twenty-five million. Very close. It's thirty million, sir. Thirty million. Yeah. So let's continue. So after that movie, after uh, he made um, District Nine, he made Elysium. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elysium. What do you think? I haven't clicked on it yet, so I'm going to make a guess. I think it was probably f- around fifty million for Elysium. Definitely more expensive because you have uh, uh, what's his balls attached to it at this Matt point in time. Damon. Matt Damon. So he's going to be a little bit more higher uh, uh, 
paid actor. So I'm going to go with 75 million. 75. And even then, I'm going to say that it's probably a little bit higher than that. Ooh, we were both incorrect, sir. $115 million. Yeah. Let's go to this next movie, Chappie. Chappie was definitely made for like $50 million. Yes, you had uh, Diane, Word, Dan, Diane Wood in there. Diane yep. Wood? Yep. Uh, in there. But I don't think they uh, cost a whole lot to, to, to do it. Uh, I'm going to go back and say that he returned to his roots and that it was somewhere between 30 to 40 million. Ooh, you were, you were, you were closer with your off guess of 50 million because it was 49 million, sir. 49 million. Yep. And his newest movie, Demonic, uh, does not have a budget listed yet because it has not come out yet. Uh, well, it hasn't it's come out to everybody. Apparently, it's been seen by audiences, and it makes me very upset. And why haven't I seen it? I'm an audience. Yeah, you're not the audience, though. I'll tell Could what I'm be. saying, dog. Could um, be. The motherfucker made a Nike hey, commercial. Get your contacts on the line and get a hold of him. I'm trying, bro. They ain't listening to me. They're like, nah, dog. I'm like, come on, man. They're like, nah. I'm like, all right, cool. I, if I had to guess, though, that movie in and of itself, with just what little I've seen, it, it is again probably another like thirty, forty million dollar. Yeah. Thing. I can't imagine it's more than that. I think if I, uh, I saw a thing right. He's using that. Um, he used some of it on some of it. He used that thing that uh, I can't think of what's called right now. The the um, the same technology that uh, John Favreau used on Lion King, and he. Used oh, fully the, on Mandalorian, uh, the projection thing. Yeah, I can't think of the name. It has a name, and I can't think of what's called. It does have a name. I can't think of it either. Um, so I guess he used that on some of it um, to help the the actors help. see things because there's some shit in that movie, probably not even close to being real. Um, the, the type of stuff he must be able to do with that type of thing, that that type of, of technology and setup. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine though? Like, holy shit! Yeah, like his Oats team with that would just be like dumb because like uh, there's a. I know you watch the Corridor Digital stuff um, a mm -hmm. lot. Did you see the one where they kind of uh, they had the dude from that team on talking about special effects? Yeah, and they talked about how like they can go through and they he worked on the Mandalorian. and they would like literally have the prop maker make something they would fully scan it put it in and if the director didn't like it he would just pull the physical object out and they would put the digital one in yeah and i was like huh yeah like we need this person to interact with this object so we'll have it real he's like you yeah. know what i don't like the way that works just get rid of it we'll put it back in later digitally and then we can fuss with it i'm like that right. don't make no sense I remember what? a whole discussion of that of that episode was literally like, is that box in the background real or fake? Yeah. Is that a real yeah. mountain? And they're like, no, in this scene, it's actually fake. In this other scenes, they're real because the actors have to interact with them. I was like, but those are fake right there. And it's like, well, I'm sorry, what? And they're like, yeah, no, that whole entire scene in like the first or second episode where, where Mando is uh, uh, talking to the, the bad guy chancellor in that one room, they're like, no, that most of that room is fake. Yeah, they're yeah, like, like the what? desk is real. The, I thought that I thought that was like a building you dudes built, and now you're telling me like ninety percent of that room was fake using this projection technology stuff. Well, they did build the entire room, but they built it digitally. Yes, which is it's nuts. Like, that is witchcraft. Y'all need to be burned at the stake. Yep. Yeah, y'all need lots of money and time to make things more, and then we will burn you at the stake at the end of your career. Yeah, that shit's bonkers, dude. Like, they were explaining it, and it made so much more sense than I ever thought it would. Because they're talking mm -hmm. about how, like, um, so instead of shooting on a green screen and throwing those characters into an image that then you have to manipulate around, they can literally take it and they can change the lighting all digitally through a digital camera from where the actual physical camera's at. And I was like, yep. And that's how you get such good lighting. What? Yeah, yeah. And they were talking about like, the whole like erasing people when he shoots him with his uh, with a rifle. And I was mm -hmm. like, 
Dang, dog. That's weird. Yeah, that shit's crazy. Right. But give that man that, dude. Like, give Oat Studios two of those just to, to make stuff with, and we will see shit that you will never believe you would ever see. I mean, the Oat Studio stuff, I know we've talked about it before on here. And do for such a low budget. So like, dumbly it low. It boggles my mind how low his low budget his movies are compared to other movies that do not have anywhere near the same graphics Mm-mm. as CG as, as some of his movies are. And it's like they did it for pennies on the fucking dollar comparatively. Yeah. You right. You right. I know I'm right. Um, uh, did you see the little teaser uh, for Jurassic World? Uh, the one that's back in the like uh, uh the fucking prehistoric era. Yeah, prehistoric era. That. Yeah, and then they're like, now watch the the rest of it on on uh, uh, in front of on IMAX in front of Fast Nine. I was yeah. like, no, <laughs> no. Gross. I'll wait till you realize nobody gives a fuck about Fast Nine and IMAX, and then just release it online and Already? I'll watch it that way. I'll maybe watch it that way because I'm still not stoked about <laughs> Jurassic World three. Well, first off, it's Jurassic World Dominion, sir. I'm sorry, Dominion. Yeah, you're I know we've had this discussion right. before, so we won't go into it any, any further. I'm only mentioning it because I actually saw, I think we talked about it uh, like a while ago, that uh, that they would be premiering the actual trailer trailer in front of Fast 9 on IMAX. But to actually see a teaser for that trailer yeah. was something I saw today. And I was like, this is just no. No. Yeah. A, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm kind of on your your side of the the, the fence when it comes to Jurassic World because that last one was. I don't want to say the word trash because that's mean to say to trash, because uh, trash was something useful and then wasn't anymore. Um, this was never useful to begin with. Yeah, no. Uh, as soon as I saw that trailer, I was like, you know what? You can go fuck yourselves. I'm still gonna watch this movie because maybe I'm wrong. I was not. Um, I enjoyed parts of it, but for overall, and I think I've said this before on here, not great. Um, Real dumb, actually. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I'm not completely stoked about the third one, um, mainly because I don't understand what you're doing. Um, No. But, uh, you know, (laughs) who knows? Who cares, I guess? I don't Um, understand what you're doing. And and obviously you're springboarding off the second movie, so that's where you have to start from. Otherwise, what are you going to ignore the second movie? We released a bunch of dinosaurs into the American Southwest, but we're going to ignore that for the third movie. No, you can't just ignore that for the third movie. So it has to involve that somehow. Yeah. Although the the teaser for the trailer being taking place in what looks like prehistoric times was just like, I don't, okay what are we doing like yes we all know when dinosaurs relatively existed why are you teasing the, the trailer like this I don't know because that's Whatever. when Vin Diesel's character Dominic Toretto debuts because <laughs> yeah. Fast 9 has to do with time travel time? oh my god no Fast 9 has to do with time travel and then that's how they get to Fast 10 in space with space dinosaurs sir Space dinosaurs changing subjects because you fast said ten di- dinosaurs fast on 10. the moon. <laughs> Joe's so bad right now. I'm so mad. I right thought now. You, I swear because, to Christ. Only because the only thing that 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 would make that concept even more crazy is if you, uh, what the fuck is that movie? Uh, uh, steel iron steel moon iron the iron iron moon iron, iron skies. Moon. Iron Skies did. If you Iron Skies did, and you suddenly had fucking Fast Nine dinosaur Nazis something or other on the moon, oh my god! Yeah, you're gonna find out, All John. Right. You might you might have sold me at that point. John Cena's so character, <laughs> Jacob Toretto, the younger brother of uh, Dominic Toretto, is actually a space dinosaur, moon dinosaur in disguise, and uh, Charlize Theron in her terrible haircut is their overlord. Who is sent? Let's just roll this into the Mario movie somehow. Yes, and we're done. We're There's a done. portal on the dark side of the moon that looks like a pipe that leads yep. to a land that has a, a giant dinosaur played by by a uh, uh, Dennis Hopper, uh, who yep. has slick back hair for some strange reason. It has nothing to do with him being dinosaurs, uh, and then there's like fungus and like 
Demolition Man technology stuff going around and boots that make you jump high and um, things like that. And they have to, you know, family. Something. I don't know. We'll, we'll work it out and somehow. And that, that, that'll be fast 11. I live but my life gross. at a quarter gigawatt an hour. No, let's not. Let's not. Let's not tarnish Back to the Future on this. There you have the dude of. that's just like fucking Marty McFly. I'm I'm not I'm not, I'm changing subjects. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> how to how, piss how, how much off. further have you gotten to? Speak, how how much further have you gotten to Sweet Tooth? Have you watched any more since uh, as we talked earlier? No, uh, because I got home and I was like, I'm going to do something. And what did I do? I played video games yeah i'm gonna guess destiny what how dare you be correct yeah i know right um i'm how trying to get that power that level up man more time into destiny. well the the reset started I'm yesterday judging you out loud no you are uh i can hear it in your voice and see it in your eyes remember there's a video in front of me i can see your judgmental eyes um i, I matt and i had this discussion your 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 friend my my friend Matt. Uh, okay, I was gonna say he's also your friend too. It's yeah. odd that I don't know why I said it that way. I'm like our friend Matt would have been like the proper way of saying it. But our friend said, Matt would have been more inclusive. Your friend Matt and I just play with him. Yeah, yeah. He's just a warm body that I have video game with because he's just won't. someone I need. Um, so, anyway, so he and I have this this mutual agreement about destiny is fun. Uh, but only because it's the same over and over again. Does that make sense to you? No, because it that, grinding made me want to blow my brains out. The thing that made it fun for me is team play. Yes, the that thing that nice. doesn't make it fun for me about team play is they only allow three people. Oh, God, so it's so maddening. The, just, just every other fucking multiplayer game has always been around four people yeah i don't understand why it not why not four why a fire team of three you're always leaving somebody out because classically video games have always had multiplayers of at least four on teams when when and you it, have what made it fun to me was that it is is multiplayer as soon as i try and start jumping into things on my own it's boring it's stupid and it's grindy and you change the rules on me every time you do major updates and i kind of hate that yeah. Anyway, continue. Um, so I agree with you a lot of those things, and they have changed a lot of them. Uh, some of them for the better. Uh, they're still, you know, kind of um, fluctuating in, in in terrible ways. Uh, uh, there's like there's three main things that I would change, and I think it would be for the best. Number one overall is only having the ability to have one exotic item in both in one it's tree. It makes no sense. When you refer to us as space gods, we should have unlimited power given to us. Yes, I understand that not everyone has all the exotics. Fuck those people. Dude, I had shit tons of exotics by the time we were. I was done playing. Yeah, you but have your them. point is, is, is absolutely right. Like, if we're thinking about this in a real-world perspective, what physically stops me from wearing all the best fucking armor and having all the best guns that I can have at once? It doesn't affect affect the single-player stuff at all. No. It doesn't. It just makes it more fun for me because that's one thing that I find fun is being overpowered. It's so much more fun to just be able to run around, jump around, kill things in a more... Because I'm not... I'm not what you would call a skilled player. I can't run around and headshot things. I can't jump and do trick shots. I'm not a great player, you know. Uh, a lot of air quotes there for everyone who can't see him. <laughs> I know, I know, right? He air quoted uh, so though. Just, so just literally saying, here, here's, just have the ability to wear all the best armor, I'll do all the best stuff, have all the best weapons, and you can just run around and one-shot things. Is, is more fun to me. Yeah. Number two thing that should change. Right? Ready? Mm -hmm. Locking Ready. items to certain activities and forcing people to play those. And yeah. as part A to that, 
is locking catalysts to forcing me to play activities I do not want to play to then unlock that activity. For example, there's a weapon right now that's stupidly powerful and amazingly fun to play with called the Wither Horde. It is a uh, grenade launcher, single shot, boom, and it does taken damage. When it hits the ground, it makes a well. Anything near it just gets fucking ruined. If you hit mm-hmm. someone with it, that dark that 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 energy goes inside of them, does internal damage. When they die, it explodes into a well as well. Amazing gun. Finally got it. I use my things to buy it out of the the little fucking temple of light thing to give me stuff I could never get before. Uh, because guess what? I never did those activities because I don't like PvP. Um, yeah. Got it. It's amazing. I got the catalyst for it, which I don't even remember how I got it. It's just like gave it to me, I guess. Well, not, yeah, gave it to me, but the way to unlock it is you have to do things, right? So you have to grind for stuff, which isn't actually that bad. It's like, use the gun. Okay. But then... I plan on doing that anyway. Yeah, I was going to do that anyways, you know. But then, the thing that kills me about it, it kills me about it. The thing that drives me insane about it is they have to give you a caveat of having to kill 100 guardians with it, with grenade launchers to unlock the catalyst for it. Mm -hmm. But I don't play anything that's PvP. I don't even play Gambit anymore because the Gambit drives me insane because I don't have enough friends to play a fire team to to be useful. Everyone's like randos and they're just like over in a corner fucking hitting their sword on their foot. Like, what are you doing? Um, It just drives me insane that they force you to have to play these activities. They should give you a ki- like an option. Hey, kill 100 Guardians with grenade launchers or kill 1,500 bad guys. Guess which one I'm going to do? You're going to go kill 1,500 yes, bad guys. Yes, because that's the part of the I game I like playing. It, right, and, and that's the worst part is that I for for – for one, I did the, something similar because uh, I played the Hunter class, and uh, I, it feels like years ago when I played, they had a really cool armor set that could only be obtained by playing Crucible. Yep. And I had to play so much fucking Crucible in order to get the whole entire armor set. And once I got it, I was just done playing Crucible. Like, I, I, I hated doing it. Uh, I want to compare it to something like The Division, who did something similar where, where it's like, okay, you can only obtain these weapons inside of the dark zones. Mm-hmm. But the difference is, is that while yes, I really wanted like the hungry hog was what was the one that I wanted from the dark zone. And you can only obtain it from the dark zone. A lot of its perks though, if I recall where I only really worked in the dark zone, like it, the reason why I wanted the hungry hogs because it's main perk was like, uh, uh, something like it could just continuously fire as long as as long as you were killing people, you like continuously hurt people. But their their concept in that was was for PvP stuff. PvP stuff, yeah. Most of the the perks and stuff were geared towards PvP. It was kind of useless to you outside of PvP, but unfortunately, that's not the case in Destiny. Those perks for that grenade launcher work everywhere. Yeah, and it the catalyst just work in PvP. So why are you locking it to PvP only that you can really obtain it or 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 actually upgrade it? Yeah, in that's PvP. what I'm saying. Yes, that's it's, what I'm saying. That's I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, you should give everybody the option, the ability. Yes, make it make it more difficult or more more like a higher number, much higher number on the 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 pve PvE side side of things like right like okay so like right now there's a thing and you never had these because you didn't play during this they have these things called champions and there's two different Mm -hmm. types of them there's a uh there's a uh a barrier champion and there's an overlord overload champion uh overload was just introduced uh but the 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 hard one is the uh the barrier champions because what happens once they take a certain amount of damage they'll pop a shield and the shield is completely impenetrable and they regenerate their life. But they give you a perk as you play the game and you unlock the artifact to add barrier piercing rounds to a certain weapon type. When they first announced it, you could put it on any piece of your armor and any gun you used would have it. Which is okay, cool. 
awesome. Then they change it to being a perk that's weapon specific, which drives me insane because last season it was on shotguns and hand cannons, I think. So now you have to have a shotgun or a hand cannon handy, handy to be able to stop them from regenerating their power every single time you're going to go into one of those ones, you have to have that, which sucks ball sack. I think grenade launchers had it too. Uh, it was real dumb. This season they put it on uh, the pulse rifles, and I think they put it on – well, I know they put it on, on auto, uh, auto rifles, which obviously it, me, I use auto rifles all the time. It's always one of my two kinetic or energy slot is a, is a assault rifle, uh, an auto rifle. I love them. They just – I like shooting bullets real fast, and it, it's fun to me. They have it on there, so every, you know I can have that going on every single time. I don't have to have like, oh, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna do a, uh, something that has champions. I have to have my fucking hand cannon that I'm not gonna fucking use all the time because a, you can never hold enough ammo for it. Plus, they they're borderline useless against very large targets and things. And you could micromanage your bullshit to get them better. Whatever. It just sucks that they went from hey, as long as you unlock this, you can have it on anything you want. To oh, it's every season's gonna be a different we- uh, like weapon type, and I'm like, why would you do that? Because they want you to try out different loadouts and have fun with different weapons. No, no, that's I don't want to. Why there's that's why they same reason why they're sunsetting. Uh, they sunset a ton of stuff because they want you to try different things. Yeah, which they is want the you to have fun with different weapons. But the it's like dumbest thing in the world. Do you know why? When you find something that you really enjoy, I should just be able to use that for goddamn fucking ever until I find something else that I really enjoy. All it really tells me is that you're not coming out with stuff that I want to play with. Yeah. That's what it really tells me. You're coming out with stuff that you think people might like, but then people don't really like, so you just sunset the old stuff to force people into the new stuff. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's another thing to grind for. It's another thing to keep people coming back. It's a, it's another collectible. It's another thing to have. It's, yeah. Yeah, and uh, the, the thing about that, too, is the, and I didn't know this until Matt pointed it out to me. He's like, hey, you should try this gun because it's real fun. I was like, oh, I'll try that gun. I had one of those. I stopped using it because I got this other stuff, right? And it wasn't Sunset. It was just I, it was an older gun. I was like, oh, I like this one a lot. Uh, I tried other stuff, right? Turns out the gun he's talking about, which is called the Nying, the Nying Hunger, I believe, is literally the same gun they just introduced in the, na- the new uh, season, but one's kinetic mm-hmm. and one's energy. So they just swapped the type. They even look exactly the same, except for the aesthetics of the new design. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I hate you so much." Yeah, I was like, "You are killing me." Because, but they, and also the other thing too is they sunset my favorite weapon of all time that I've ever had, which is the Misfit, and mm-hmm. it makes me so mad because they're like, "Oh!" And then the other thing that this is what. And I told this to Matt. This is what makes me the most upset about sunsetting stuff, right? So they sunset sunsetted weapons. And for anybody listening who doesn't know what sunsetting weapons are, they literally take them out of the the drop pool so you can't earn them anymore. And then they lock the ability to upgrade them past the, 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 the level they're at. So essentially, uh, you can't use them anymore. Uh, and so the thing that pissed me off about it is I didn't realize... And they, I, I stopped playing Destiny for like a year or so, uh, uh, and because of the whole grindiness and just I just I wouldn't play enough to do everything, and I don't play the pinnacle events, so I can't get the pinnacle stuff, which is my third thing I'm gonna change. Uh, but the the thing that made me mad is they sunset weapons and then redid the weapon with not a new name, not a new skin, the exact same weapon with a different set of perks in it. Mm-hmm. So I had a, a rocket launcher, which the name of it escapes me at the moment. But anyways, they sunset it. It has a little thing where the, on the corner where it tells you the, the, the season that came from is, is white or gray now, which means you can't upgrade anymore. I think it's white, whatever. I got this the same rocket launcher in the new season. Same everything. All the same perks. So it's the exact same gun. But I have to remaster work it. 
which isn't actually that hard to do anymore because they give you fucking masterwork cores. Like, they're like, hey, you stumbled over uh, this rock. Guess what that rock is? Masterwork cores. Um, well, that's good at least yeah. because that's what I hated. When That's what I, one of the reasons why I oh. stopped is because yeah, they introduced the masterwork cores and it was oh. like, okay, I got used to how it worked. And then uh, what was the, the, the expansion or the next season, season two? Forsaken. I can't remember. Forsaken. And they just totally reworked that system. And it's like, no, now you have to go and get, you have to grind for this things in order to actually make masterwork cores. And I was like, Nah, I'm nope. done. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Out. So they li- literally the same rocket launcher, same perks, same everything, but this one's not sunset because it has a different icon on it. And I was like, that makes sense. What? I just had to wait another season. And you gave me the same fucking gun. Where's my misfit? Yep. Give me a release of the misfit. There are no yeah. assault rifles. There's only been one assault rifle or auto rifle in the game. That's 900 rounds per minute. And that is the, Misfit. Never again. Nah. I was like, why? Just uh, makes me so mad. And uh, to wrap this up, number three thing I would change uh, is the locking pinnacle gear to the harder difficulty things when you need the pinnacle gear to do the harder difficult things. Yes, it always felt like that if I wanted to make sure that I... Because you, you, you eventually get to that light level where you're like, I just... Only a couple of light levels from being max, but I can't get the max stuff unless I do the really high end stuff. But I can't really do the really high end stuff because I'm not max light level. Like I can't do it on my own. Yeah. Like I, I use this analogy to Matt and uh, uh, to Johnny when I was talking about this and my frustration with it. It's like someone saying, Hey, Joe, I need you to dig a hole to earn a shovel. Yeah. But I'm not going to give you a shovel. To, to me, it's literally, I'm, I'm applying for this entry-level job. But they want you to have at least a year of experience at this entry-level job. But how do I get a year of experience at this job unless I get the job? Yep. Type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it, it drives me insane. It's like, and they give you so little chance to get pinnacle gear, which is what usually gives you that next light level up that Mm -hmm. you have to strive hard and they give you, and then, then they, again, they put it behind these, Oh, you have to do it on this difficulty. And by the way, not a guaranteed drop. And so you, it's still just a chance. It's just, you do it on harder difficulty and your, your chance goes from 10% to 15% chance of you getting it. You still have to run it a shit ton of times. Just be able to get it. Just, harder difficulties yes yeah and they they refuse to give you stuff that drops at your level so you can then max out your stuff to at least your light level and then they're like oh yeah you're going to give you a bunch of like 1310s and 13 zone 1309 i'm like those do me absolutely no good yeah don't give them to me i'd rather you not give me shit to fill my inventory up just give me drops of material, of money, of, of glimmer. Like, that's all I, I mean, it's just so dumb. It's like, hey, mm-hmm. you just played this activity three times in a row. Here's an item at your exact same light level. Mm-hmm. You're like, cool. I played this incredibly difficult thing that took me probably half an hour to actually complete at the, at the low end. We're talking about probably just like simple what are those weird cave things that you guys have been doing lately? Those lost sectors, lost sectors, you know, probably 50, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes at most, but heaven forbid, no, I actually have to go do nightfalls or raids and stuff, which can take me like an hour or two on certain difficulties and definitely not going to beat those solo, but I, I get through it. I somehow managed to get through it and you give me something that is blue in the same fucking light level that I'm already at. And, it doesn't get me anywhere. I just wasted an hour or two of my life. Yep. Yeah. yeah it's it's uh it's very frustrating and it's there's it's entertaining and to your point uh, from before we started my rant of what I'd change. It is much much more fun with friends and I'm not air quoting. I was just saying friends. Like when I play with Matt and sometimes Larson, uh, and then before with Matt's other friend Amanda. Um, just because 
you can coordinate better. You can it's 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 a guarantee that all of them's gonna have a headset for the most part. Um, and you're not you can joke around. You can have fun. Yeah, yeah. you know, it just it just makes it that much more fun. But it's like also playing with randos ev like one out of ten times. It's gonna be a good fun time. The other nine times, someone's running ahead or trying to use their fucking sparrow to speed ahead, and then they get and fucking they die, and you're like, oh, cool. All of a sudden, all the bad guys focus on Cody. Or heaven forbid that you get halfway through it and suddenly you realize that the other one guy dropped out, and because that guy dropped out, the other dude dropped out, and you're like, well, great, great. Now I'm stuck here alone, so I'm just gonna fucking drop out. I, again, just wasted, you know, thirty minutes or something, or getting through a, a certain area only to just give up yes that's the problem and I hate it but I also love the yep. game it drives me insane anyhow uh, is there anything else you want to talk about no okay uh, I guess that's it there was no plan for this and never really is uh, so that's it for this episode of comes naturally we are Yo. I've been Cody and as usual, you fuckers just came naturally. Bye.